live street fight self-defense lesson, we're talking about the best self-defense tool that you can carry, which is the walking cane. You can take it anywhere you go. I want to show you how you can train with it. Start with your hand in the crook. The long side is coming out of your thumb and you're gonna spin it. This is a way to warm up the body, get strong, get safe. You wanna stay safe from injury while you're doing this workout, but you also wanna develop a lot of strength in your core muscles. You wanna improve your cardio fitness all that's going to happen with this basic spin, now you're going to bring it across and back in front of your body. You're going to learn how to fight with this thing. It's very effective. It's very powerful. You're going to be able to bring it in very quickly, improving your footwork with this technique, but it requires that you go side to side in this warm-up. So you're going to start to move a little faster. Your stomach's up and in, abs tight. You can do this also. In the seated position, it's one of the things I love the most about this self-defense tool. You can take it anywhere, it works anywhere you are. If you're sitting down, it's the same basic warm-up. You're warming up this way, this hand is always up. You're gonna bring it across and back in front of your body, put it in the other hand. And from this position, from a seated position, maybe you're waiting for the bus, maybe you're on a train, you can fight, striking hard, can help you get up get out of there, fight fast, strike hard. You can use this part, it's very effective. Put it in the left hand, you're gonna warm up a little bit more, stomach up and in, abs tight. All you're doing here, keep your hand closed, and you're just cranking, going around and around. Hello, it's good to see you today. Once you've done this a little bit, for about 30 seconds, front and back, front of the body, get this hand up, learn to fight in this guarded position, Keep them from smashing you in your head. Don't let them turn off your operating system. You can't defend yourself if you're knocked out. Side to side. And now you're ready to practice striking. I wanted to talk today specifically about multiple attackers because this is a very effective weapon for multiple attackers. There are two basic ideas that you always have to remember. One is you always wanna be looking for what are your targets, what targets are gonna destroy or remove. That's a principle of self-defense. This principal saying, I'm gonna go for his ability to see me. That means you're going for the eyes, right? Straight in, striking or with two hands. The second principle is you wanna be able to, to uh, hello Stanley, it's good to see you. You wanna be able to hold on to it, right? You don't want them to take it away from you, use it against you or you lose it. They've got a knife and now it's your skin and flesh and bone against the bladed weapon better if you have this long stick. So there are two principles. One, always, what are my targets? Number two, when you feel like there's a chance that they've closed in on you, you try to keep distance, you've got someone over here, you're trying to keep them in front of you, trying to move, but maybe you're not that fast on your feet anymore. Maybe you just, you can't do this bouncing around, hit this guy, and come over here, hit this guy over here. It's in the link below. You'll see in the link, the first link is for this cane, you want a little bit less, this is a martial arts cane. It's rattan, it's super flexible. And I hit this thing now probably a thousand times and they don't break. If you wanna get the one from Amazon, it's about 10 bucks and it might break. I broke one finally, but not until I hit that thing about a thousand times. It's a little bit in, more inexpensive. It's made out of hickory. The second one, the Amazon link, this one is from the martial arts store below and they will ship it just about anywhere for you. Hello, welcome from India beautiful country, beautiful people, the birthplace of Asian martial arts, India, martial arts like Salambam and Kiryapati and all, I can't even sell those words, but you know what I'm talking about. That's where it all started. That's why I get so excited when I see you coming in from India and saying hello. Anyway, so we're back here, we're fighting. When you think that you might lose it, bring the other hand onto it. Now from this position, especially if you get caught off guard and they're right up here, Good morning from Palm Beach Gardens. That's where I live, I live in Palm Beach Gardens. You probably knew that, right? Uh, it's good to see you. It's right here, I'm just in Lake Park. Come see me today, we'll work out today. From here, you're gonna bring it straight down and it's gonna go across his face, his nose, it's gonna bust some of his teeth, teeth out. They catch you off guard, they put their hand on you, they're trying to grab you. Your cane is here, you just bring it straight up, just like you start every other time and it just comes down. If it runs into the nose, that's great. Now from here, you have the ability 
to very forcefully shove them back. Going back to the idea of what are your targets? Which will you remove or destroy? His ability to see, breathe temporarily, permanently, right? Now it's here, straight in, creating distance between you and the attack. Then you can go back to the longer distance strikes. But you should be able to do both. Remember that, you know, this is optimal. If you can, this is great. But what if you don't have a choice? What if, like I said before, you don't move as well and you can't bounce around and switch and move? That's cool if you can. You can keep in front of you and you're fighting like a swashbuckler or whatever, but you just create. Yeah, that's a really good choice. Um, but they're more expensive, right? I like options that are easily accessible. CVS Pharmacy, Walgreens, go get yourself an uh, uh, inexpensive cane. Um, Amazon. Uh, to you too as well. Thank you. But Amazon has uh, free shipping if you have Prime, nine, ten bucks. A hickory cane, very durable, right? Extremely hard. It hits really hard. Lots of force. This one comes from Century Martial Arts. The link's below. That's that first link. And again, uh, uh, sh uh, quick shipping comes really fast. This one's made out of rattan, so it's extremely durable. I think Century has three versions. They have this one. The one that's a little bit more expensive, that's a little heavier. And then they have that heavier one like the Cane Master's Cane. In fact, it might be a Cane Master's Cane, I don't know. But really strong, really powerful. You know, and if you have the means, if you have a lot of money, get all three. If you're just starting out like I like to, I like to be sure that I really want to do it before I start to invest a lot of time and money in it. So I start with the easiest. I start with it. If someone gave me a broken one, I would tape it. Yes, you can use a metal cane. Depending on the metal, it's gonna either be, it might be a little bit heavier. The only one that I'll say that I haven't found a way to work with yet is the one that's collapsible. And that's because it's got that band inside, that uh, flexible elastic band that allows you to break it down into three pieces. And that thing, when you start to move this thing, the band goes wah, wah, and the pieces come apart. So it's, uh, imagine like a telescopic kind of thing. Like those um, telescopic batons. You see a lot of those guys will carry them they're not legal, you can't carry one. This is a much better option. So if you can get one of these, and again, 10 bucks. Yeah, info at Hotmail. No, sorry, <laughs> I got two of them together. Info at quantumstrong.com. All one word, quantumstrong.com is the website. You can go see one of my websites, but it's info at quantumstrong.com. Send it to me, I'd love to see it. Uh, anyway, back to the strikes. We're here. Put the hands up in front of your body. If it's in your right hand, put your right foot forward, and you have this first striking motion, fast and fast. When you practice self-defense, especially a self-defense tool like this one, a fast self-defense tool, easy self-defense tool, is the one that you can get into action right away. So from here, get in a better position, put the stick between you and the threat. We'll say this is the threat. I'm paying attention, situational awareness, that's always the beginning of self-defense. I come upon the threat, if the threat comes upon me, I get in a better position. My hands are up. I use a verbal command, back up, stay back. I'll defend myself. And then if I have to, that first strike, just fast and quick. From here to here, and it comes straight through their midline. Always fight from behind your sticks. You'll see when people lose their stick or lose their cane. Good, I'll see you guys later. They're, they're making these big, big, wide striking motions. And it feels like that's gonna be more powerful, but it's really not. From here, you wanna be real tight. You're gonna fight from behind the cane. Always keep the cane between yourself and the threat. That's a principle, if you can. From here, the second strike comes over that other shoulder and out. So you have one and you have two. One, two. Yeah, they shouldn't. And that's the funny thing, because I've talked to a lot of people who have to carry cane. And they say when they first started carrying their cane, they felt themselves like they were a bigger target. And that's why they resisted it. They said, I resisted leaving the house. I didn't want to leave the house because I thought everybody was going to pick on me because I had a cane or see me as a, a, an easy target. And what they said was when they did start to finally get out of the house, mostly because they started doing this training, their confidence grew and they walk around, people leave them alone because they see the cane, and it's not that they feel sorry for you, because you start to walk, with, especially you do this training, you start to walk with some confidence, shoulders back and down, stomach up and in, eyes with the horizon, 
and then you're quick to respond, not panic, not freeze when a threat comes, but you respond to it, get in that better position, put the stick between you and the threat, verbal command, back up, stay back, and then that first strike, second strikes. This is what you practice. Practice strike one, strike two, and you're gonna go easy like this, right? Easy, smooth, slow as smooth, smooth as fast, and then graduate as hard as you humanly possibly can. And that's because when you train for self-defense, a lot of times people miss this point. You have, you have to go all in. You have to make your body feel what it feels like to go as hard and be sloppy and be, you know, have it uh, create a lot of tension in your hand. When you start to do those strikes, you're going to feel this is going to cause extra stress in your hand on your grip. And your hand's going to be fighting to keep it in there. It will, but you're going to have to fight for it, right? And when you go to defend yourself, you don't want that to be the first time you feel what it's like to go all in. You've got to practice that. You have to make that switch in your head. I will defend myself. And then every single strike has to be trying to end the fight. Your intention is in the fight with every strike. You don't know if he's got a couple buddies coming up or someone's behind you with a big chunk of concrete going to smash in the back of the head. You've got to try, hopefully, get rid of that guy. And then you fight this guy and fight this guy if you have to. Multiple attackers. But you can't be, you can't stay in your comfort zone. Don't practice here the whole time. This is easy, right? This feels good. It starts to get your heart rate up. Start to break a sweat. Feels like you're doing something. But harder, faster, harder. Kind of like that, uh, what was that movie? Uh, Spaceballs. They talk about ridiculous speed. If you've seen that movie, you know what I'm talking about, right? Just that idea of ridiculous speed. All in, 100%. Try, can't breathe after because you're just pushing yourself. And then third and fourth angle, bringing it up and bringing it up. So you have one, two, three is here, palm turns up. You bring it up through his ribs, but also maybe he's grabbing or throwing a punch or has a knife, or maybe they're carrying one of those. Hello, it's good to see you. They have one of those. Um, hold on, let me get it. One of these, uh, collapsible batons or expandable batons, I guess, depending on which way it's going, right? And they're trying to, maybe they're one of those Antifa thugs and they're out there smacking people and they're, because you, I've seen it now, I've been watching like the pro, Portland uh, thugs, those protesters out there, they're uh, not protest, rioters. You know, protesting is one thing and I'm all for it. Speak your, speak your piece. That's why I serve my country. I believe it's your right. Speak up, say the things you want to. But this thing is a weapon. Police officers sometimes carry these. I don't find it very effective for self-defense. I don't like that it collapses when you go in because sometimes I might want to do that. But also, most of them, they seem like they would, but they really don't have as much force as the medical device. Yes, this medical device which is allowed to be taken anywhere and everywhere, on the train, on the plane, at the bus station, into the federal building, into the police station, for self-defense. Now, there was some thug criminal who used one of these in New York a few weeks ago, but that just proves they're super effective for self-defense. Now, she was a thug criminal. She used it to hurt people, uh, not for self-defense, but for some uh, socialist agenda or whatever, I don't know. But yeah, you can take it into the bank, you can take it anywhere you go. And this, in most places, is illegal. You're not allowed to have these unless you have a law enforcement. You are law enforcement. That means a police officer or a, um, uh, who the other guys, uh, not security, the prison guards. Those guys, a lot of sheriffs, they also train on these in a large, uh, yeah, she did. She, she was on the, one of the bridges. It was like the, the chief of police in New York. He was walking across the bridge with his people. They were clearing the bridge. She pops up over the side of the bridge out of nowhere, and, and they have video of it. Bam! And she splits them open. They needed stitches, like three uh, police officers. She, she whacked them. And then they went to jail, and she bonded out for free. She was out on the street like 10 minutes later or something. All politics. We're not getting into that. But the point is, it's very effective, and it works. Um, about a month and a half ago, a, an inmate in a prison uh, took out two other for, for good, right? Took them out. 
and it was the same kind of thing. No, they do, they, no, they do carry those, but they showed her, and it was a legit hickory cane that looked like the ones that I get from Amazon for 10 bucks. The link's below. That's what she had on that one. I have seen a lot of protesters. There was a, uh, it was funny, there was a, um, uh, on the, the local paper, on the front new uh, page, there was a picture, and it said, right, right when the protest started, and it said, uh, peaceful protesters, protest in West Palm Beach, or something like that, and this guy's coming, he's got baggy pants on, but he's got two cans of spray paint on each side of his stretchy pants, and he's carrying a Louisville, like a, a metal, like black and purple, Louisville slugger, in his hand, like, I'll get, you know, he's running to this peaceful protest with his baseball bat. Anyway, again, politics. Let's keep politics out of it. I'm talking about this. For your safety, for your self-defense, as a law-abiding citizen, you just want to have the best self-defense tool. And the best self-defense tool is the walking cane because you can't carry a pair of nunchucks. Not in New York City. They're illegal still. San Francisco, probably illegal still. People see those uh, because the old movies, Bruce Lee was out wah, smacking people and they're like, oh, deadly weapon. We got to get that off the streets. <laughs> this is much more uh, lethal, in my opinion, than a pair of nunchucks. A pair of nunchucks, you get that thing swinging, you get it swinging, you get it swinging, bam! And yes, it hurts. I've been hit by nunchucks uh, with people who had intention to hurt me with them. And it does hurt. But I got to uh, tell you, honestly, there's no way that it creates that much force with a pair of nunchucks. Yeah, all of it's illegal. You're right, Stanley, but this is not. This is why this is the best self-defense tool. Now, I did watch Hard to Hurt, and his name is Mike, Krusty Mike, or Rusty Mike, or something Mike. Um, he's, it's probably not Krusty or Rusty. He just, uh, he's, it's funny. I think he's a former law enforcement, smart guy, great fighter, and, but he's talking about the light. You point it and flash it, someone's out. And he's right, absolutely. But it's all semantics, right? Um, and other people say, well, the gun, that's the best one. Not always. You can't carry that in most places. Um, I had someone come in here last week, and he showed me his concealed carry card. He said, if you're comfortable, can I carry this? And I'm like, yeah, I have no problem with it. You're smart. You have, uh, you've taken the course. You're not flashing into people. You don't seem like you have a temper problem, because some people with temper problems shouldn't have guns, period. But he seemed like a decent dude. But you can't take it in the bank. You can't take it into a lot of uh, schools. You can't take it in a lot of places. Take this anywhere. So you have this option, right? And we're talking about multiple attackers today. And I wanted you to think of two things. One, when you can, creating distance, striking. When you can't, you get close, get your other hand on it for uh, self-defense and for extra strength. Now, one of the things that happens all the time, yeah, I mean, you know, if, if, if they keep, uh, keep shutting everything down, and I'm not gonna, it's like I said, I'm trying to avoid the politics because I don't, I, I look at the numbers and I'm like, well, wait a minute. And I honestly think I'll be the first to say it here. Six to nine months, because I was at Hurricane Katrina. I went to Hurricane Katrina, which was here in the States a few years ago, um, and saw what happened when politics and money are thrown. Politics, are, they're, they are fighting each other and then they just start throwing all kinds of money at an issue. And back then it was like this hurricane that devastated everything. There was another one that came in right after Hurricane Rita just destroyed it. And I saw that. It was horrible. And at the same time, I saw just these businesses just taking fistfuls of dollars. And it wasn't there that they were greedy. It was that FEMA was like throwing it in their face. And they were saying, no, no, we'll do it for 10% of what you want to pay us. And FEMA's like, no, we got to give you $300 for this $20 uh, hotel or $20, you know, it's like $20. It's that on the sign, like $20 a night, hotel room. And FEMA said, no, we can't pay 20. We gotta pay 350. And then, and, and then uh, like, just multiply that by every situation. I think that's what's happening now with testing. I think that there's so much money being thrown at testing that you're gonna find there might be some exaggeration of numbers. That's all I'm saying. Because the numbers don't seem to fit or whatever. But I'm gonna say that here first, six to nine months from now, election's over, you're gonna see that um, all these weird stories coming out like, oh, you know, well, we said it was 80,000 a minute and it was really only like 800 or something like that. Anyway, yeah, so, yeah, send it to us. We know how to spend it, right? We'll, 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 and, and you know what I'll do? I'll go over here to the homeless park, make sure they all have some food and some water because they're not getting taken care of. And then to go to the schools and go into the cities that need the most help. Anyway, if, if we were in charge, we'd know what to do. But that's not what we're talking about. All right, so you've got multiple attackers, strike, but what happens, the guy over here grabs this. I want you to learn how to do this.
right? This. This is very important. If he's holding here, you just do this. That's, he's going to be pulling over here, right? You're going to do, and then down. So you're going to go all through as fast as you can because you're very strong when you do this and this. And, the, and a lot of times it's corrupted systems, and it's not always corrupted people. Hello, Eric. It's good to see you. Um, I just want to throw that in there. Systems are broken. From here, twer turning. Sometimes it's people. From here, turning. Turning. Practice that. You have to be able to turn and turn. And if you turn, pushing. And if you turn, pushing. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. So from here, someone grabs on the side, turn into them. Step in on that and then push. They grab here, two hands they're holding like this. They're trying to pull this way. You're going to twist it like that. And ideally, this is going to smash them right in the face, right? So they're pulling here, bring it over down and step in on that strike. They're right in front of you. They grab here, they're pulling toward them. Same thing, your hand, you're just gonna twist. And watch what happens, right? Whether it's here or here, that's where your hand breaks. That's where it moves up and down. So your grip, they're strong, they're pulling, 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 you're pulling back and forth. They're trying to get this out so they can bash you with it. You're gonna twist it instead of fighting them on the pull. Push at them and then twist. When you twist straight down, if you can, don't lean into them. From here down, from here down. Once you're down, then step into them, shove them off, they, get, they let go of it, and then you're back to your striking. But you can practice this. Now hold on because I wanna show you one thing that you can do. Uh, no, you're exactly right. Um, if I put my, I carry collie sticks, Two, uh, Kali, Scream, Arnis, what do you want to call them? They're in the back of my truck. Truck's out back today. From the back of my truck, in my backpack, you ask me, how do you carry them without looking like a out-of-work drummer? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you probably can't, right? But I stick them, and they're, they're not this long. I stick them in my, uh, hold on, let me get a pair. And you can see why these are so, yeah, this is self-defense for a man. From here, these are really effective, right? You can jab, you can jab on that end. You can strike with two hands at once. You can move in, you can go to the legs. So they're a very effective self-defense tool. And then I carry them. Yeah, we'll, we'll go for the old man. Now you have to ask what old man means because some old men still got it. They still move, they still have strength, they still have power. Think of Bill Superfoot Wallace. Look at the link below or uh, go type in my name and Bill Superfoot Wallace and you'll see this video I did just months ago of this guy. He's in his mid seventies and he still moves like he did when he was a pro fighter in his younger days. He still has speed and power. But if you're talking about the old man who takes 26 pills a day for his heart and his blood pressure and his diabetes and his, uh, I don't know what else you take him for, all those things, because you take this pill and that makes you take this pill and that makes you take this pill, and then he watches television 22 hours a day. Yeah. And then, you know, all he does is sit and watch TV and he, he goes like this. That's his only exercise. Take, take, taking the pills or eating the food, drinking the stuff. And he whines to everybody who listen. Oh, it sucks getting old, man. It's all, I hate getting old. It sure is hard getting old. It's not, it's not age, it's lifestyle. He stopped moving. He stopped challenging himself. He stopped getting outside. Uh, welcome. You know, it's, it's not because he's old. It's because of his choices in life. Now you can still make better choices and you can reverse it, right? So it depends on which kind of old man you're talking about. You're talking about the old man. There's my sticks, by the way. So they're in my backpack, right? And then, you, you, because you asked me, you said, how do you carry the sticks without looking like an out-of-work drummer? Which I suppose means walking around like this, right? What I do is when I take my backpack places, I always have them in there. No one has ever asked me about them. And I know, um, on, a, on a related but different note, if they were sitting in my car in the front seat and a police officer pulls me over for a probable cause and he walks up or she walks up and they say, 
Yeah, I'll show you. And they say, um, that's right. No, your English is great, Eric. They say, uh, you know, what are those doing in there? That's a weapon. You can't have those in there. We're going to confiscate them. I'm going to write you a citation. You're going to have to pay money to get them back. We're going to destroy whatever. You have to keep them in the trunk, right? In the back of the car. Then, same, same scenario. Police officer pulls you over, sees your cane sitting on the passenger side of your car, says nothing, nothing, yes. So it says nothing about, um, are, you, are you talking about like this, where you do the nunchucks and you go over the wrist like that? He'll say nothing about your cane because it's a medical device. You're allowed to take it anywhere. That's why it's the best self-defense tool ever. It's the best self-defense tool you will ever have and ever see because it's so versatile, it goes anywhere, right? And if you want, you can practice it like a pair of nunchucks. Not really, but you get the idea. You can do so much stuff with it. It's very versatile. Now, um, you practice, you come out, right? And you put the cane between you and the attacker. Strike one, two. You have these four basic strikes, two angles, down and up. Then you have a horizontal strike, right? You just create distance. You can do that low to their knees, or maybe it's a dog running around mauling people. Good morning. So you can do it low, you can do it in the middle, you can do it up to the face. And then you have vertical, just straight down, straight down. And then coming down, coming up, you come up. If you're gonna strike with it, make sure you turn your palm up. Because if you come up here and you run into something like the middle of their legs, it's gonna peel out of your hand. This is um, rattan. And you can see below, if you go to that first link, it says martial arts gear. Look at the weapons, the canes there that are made out of rattan. There's a practice one, and there's a training one. They're both rattan, and they're both really strong. Kali, get rattan. Don't, uh, don't get the wood, don't get the metal. I love metal, but it's fun to train. But the rattan, they're gonna last you the longest, and you're gonna break, beat them up, and they're not that expensive to replace. The hardwood ones, because they used to sell them, the kind that like Jeff Speakman used in The Perfect Weapon. Anybody ever see that movie? Those, those are the ones we started with years ago, right? They were like two big booms, like two baseball bats. Those, they, weren't, they weren't ideal. That's because nobody could get rattan for a long time. Yeah, exactly. Finally, HIPAA's helping us. Or it's not even HIPAA, it's because um, HIPAA is about privacy, right? It's the, uh, in, the in this country. Um, oh, they get with you all the time. The bathroom's got to have like six... Uh, inches this way and this way, ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act. So you're allowed to carry it anyway, right? Anywhere. Police officer won't say, show me your card to carry. Yeah, what a great movie. I love Jeff Speakman. He's still around, by the way. Um, not that I know him or anything, but I think he's got a YouTube channel. You can watch him. Um, yeah, with Kane, the most important thing to know about punches coming to your face is that you need to have your hands up in this position. Now, this position is wrong. I see these um, karate blocks all the time, like American karate, and they're going, I, actually, I don't even know what it is. There, there's a rule. Yes, yeah, see the day, right? There's a rule that if this doesn't have the right angle, the correct, correct angle, it's like 70 or 120 degrees. If it's the correct angle, your whole body moves back. This is the correct angle here. If it's any less than that, and they start push, yeah, he said, I'm going to take the right side of this cane and put it on the left side of your face. There's nothing you can do about it. Actually, he said that with his foot, but then he smashes him with the cane later. Because the Hapkido cane, Billy Jack was Hapkido. Uh, Bang Su Han, right, was his instructor. Um, I think he just passed three years ago. Or maybe he didn't. I don't know. I don't want to kill him off if he didn't. Anyways, his hand, your hands are here. The punch is coming to your face. Move your whole body out of the way to dodge a punch. Your body moves out of the way, which means you have to have some footwork. You have to be able to move from side to side. Now you can turn a little bit. You can turn this way, turn this way. Notice when I turn, my hands stay up, but you have to be able to, to move a little bit. And then be okay with them running into your hand. If I put my hand up here and you can't see my face anymore, you're not gonna start punching my hand. You're gonna move your body to try to hit me in the face. When you take that step to move, I'm going to take that opportunity. I'm going to hit you first for self-defense. If you can, hit them first. Now, it's this. 
You put my cane back. If I'm here, we're talking about dodging a punch. Punch is coming to your face. Your hands are here, and you naturally flinch. You're going to be in the right position. This is called a flinch block, by the way. You get in this position. Yes, um, I have none, but go ahead and ask. From here, coming back here, coming here. Yeah, um, that's the great thing about the cane, though. You're not allowed to ask, I think that's your point, right? You can't ask me about my medical conditions. And they can say, well, what, what medical conditions you have that necessitate you wearing a, uh, walking with a cane? You say, it's none of your business. It's my human right. You're not allowed, especially in this country. If you're in a communist country like China, North Korea, you're on your own, you know, Cuba, they can do whatever they want because it's communism. But here in America, it's freedom, right? So your hands are here, they're not allowed to ask you. Um, the good thing here is you have all this bony stuff, right? They throw those punches, they're running into your arms, it's better than your nose, your eyes, your throat, your mouth, but let them hit you here. If you have a cane, it's 10,000 times better because now you have this stick, even if they have a knife. I'd rather try to destroy that knife, or destroy the hand carrying the knife, destroy the hand carrying the knife, I'd rather hit their hand with that knife in it with this than try to, try to take it away, grab it, I mean, if I don't have a choice, I have to try to grab it, pin it to them, smash them as much as I can with the other hand. But if I have this, I can try to keep that distance, right? The punch is coming to your face. Your stick is here. They got to get around your stick. Yeah, police always have power. I don't care what country it is. Um, but if you do a little research, especially in this country, you, you can know your rights. Uh, I was in law enforcement in the military. And so we did a lot of training on rights, which you're allowed to do, which you're not allowed to do. And if you know, that's why this, this whole thing right now is kind of interesting because, no, you don't even have to say I have vertigo. Well, maybe, maybe certain places. But in this country, when a police officer starts to say, what right do you have to carry that cane? You can say, I don't have to explain to you why I get to carry this cane. And then, I mean, you should still be polite. If you get a fighting stance to try to fight the cop who's got a gun, and a uh, taser, and probably a billy club or two, then, then you're, you're gonna get hurt anytime you don't comply, right? And if they say, put your hands in the car, or whatever, whatever, they take your cane, you can't control that. But if you do know your rights and you say, look, I have every right, I'm, I'm not trying to hurt anybody, I'm just walking around, this helps me get around, which is true, and it helps you get around, right? And, and that's a true statement. But you say, it's my right, it's my right. And then um, if they violate your rights, you go to court and you'll win in court because all the rights are on your side. And we're seeing that over and over again as you keep, you know, hamstringing and handcuffing the cops in certain situations right now. Again, I don't want to get political, but um, just know in this country, it's a medical device and you don't have to prove that you have to carry it or that you need, you don't need a card. You don't need a wristband, you know, one of those uh, uh, medical bracelets that says that you must that you're allowed to carry. That's why it's such an effective self-defense weapon. Now, let's talk about not just striking and striking. This, by the way, is like a, um, a bayonet, right? You have two hands, it's very powerful. I want you to step in when you can, step in to the other side. If they're to your side, you can step in, create that distance, and then start to strike. You can also strike with this side. There's no rule that says you're not allowed to strike. And this is like a big fist because of the shape and the extra weight. You have extra weight there. Now you have a, kind of a leverage attack, leverage weapon, and you can go back to here. If they're behind you, from here, step. Step the other way. So you just step. It's very effective. If they're super, maybe they came up and they grabbed you and they've got you in a bear hug for whatever reason. I don't know why they bear hug you, but you can just, bam, you bring it up because it doesn't take a lot to do these motions. Punching bag. Don't waste your money on a bob. My personal opinion. I saw um, the local uh, sheriff's department had, it was a picture and they had like 50 bobs. And I thought, man, I wish I was the one that sold them all those bobs. But I know because I've had bobs, bobs is body opponent bag made by Century. It's got that rubbery skin. It tears your, your knuckles up really well because it's, and, and some people like it because they say, well, it feels like hitting a face. But if you really want to spend your money wisely, you can hang a bag. I would get a floor bag like this. Yeah, uh, get, but, but I would go for the, the Wave Master. 
because when they first, I've had these since the day they started making them because they called us. I was in a big school managing at the time and they said, hey, we've got the new product. We want to send you a couple for free so you can test them out. If, yeah, if, if you can do that, that's better. Um, it, but I, I have this space, I pay rent and I put uh, holes in the wall to mount those things. You might not have that able or ability where you are, but you might have this. The only uh, drawbacks about the floor bag, now the, the water in the bottom of this thing is 275 pounds. So that's pretty good resistance. It moves really well. If you get the WaveMaster power line, yeah, for sure. Um, but you know what's cool in, in this space? I have, and hold on, I don't want to make you dizzy. The speed bag, I have that really sweet bag right there in the wallet title thing. That's like punching somebody's head. That's a workout. That'll make your muscles stronger. That's like punching someone in the face. That's a water bag. It's full of water. They use those for boats. They go on the side of boats and keep them from crashing into the dock. And then we, you know, we they turn in the bags. That's the Muay Thai bag, so it's longer. And then that's the old fashioned 100 pound um, uh, floor bag or uh, you know punching bag leather so you know and right now it's brand new so right now it, it's not brand new I've been punching and kicking on it for about six months but it's still really uh, it's like punching a wall so that's fun for that but I've been doing it forever I like to feel that most of the time when you go to the gym you get one that's already um, worn out and worn in and so it doesn't have that kind of resistance but that thing's like punching a brick and it's good I like that, but I have, this is martial arts school. I've been doing this for th over 30 years. So I know what to get exactly how much I don't spend over, um, you know, spend too much. But if you don't have a choice, um, oh, these are sweet. You've got to see these too. And you can get these from the link below is, um, oh, I, I, on these, these, these are a little bit sturdier. You have to remove two pins and then they fold against the wall. Now, uh, you can get this. Those are made by RDX. So on Amazon? No. Well, not really. I mean, I grew up, you know, doing stuff, having to do things, f having to figure things out. When you own a building, I owned, owned the martial arts school in Ohio for years and years and years. We owned the building. And so you end up fixing everything because you get tired of paying other people to come and fix things that you, you watch them. And you're like, that cost me 180 bucks for you to drill that hole and fix that little thing. And then you figure out how to do it. So... Um, you need a uh, hammer drill and then you need the right hardware and you'll figure it out. You know, there's no reason why you can't. And then, but those are really cool because you pull those two pins out and they all flatten against the wall, which gives you more floor space if you have a martial arts school. This, what I was gonna show you about this power line, cause you can get the, the regular Sentry, which I don't, I would not suggest for anybody or this one. Yeah, bring it, bring it with you. See how much extra, I mean, that's a good, um, maybe almost a, probably 10 inches. And, and when they first brought these out, they would break, all kinds of stuff. Um, the, each one has, if you look at the very top, it's, there's, there's six on each side. I try not to make anybody dizzy, but I want you to be able to see it. And I think that's overkill. But I put them, I put them all in, those are concrete anchors. I asked you a question about the nunchucks again. Yeah, and those are awesome, but, but you, and you can see, so I can switch them around. I take down the Muay Thai bag, and I have another one of those. I haven't set it up yet. It's, it's supposed to go on the other side, but I have, um, yeah, you need a concrete wall or a solid wall, um, or you need to build a frame. You can also build a frame. You go, you get those two by eights, two by, like a two by four. They're about this thick, and they're this long, and then you go from floor to ceiling. If you have something at the ceiling to attach it to, if you don't, you have to make kind of like a triangular frame, and then you bolt it into the wall. And if you can't bolt it into the wall, then you have to make, an, make it come out a little bit, and then you do it. But there are solutions everything. You can figure it out. Don't let anything stop you, though. When you start to have an idea and you're like, I want to do this thing, I want to have some stuff to train with, I like the floor bag because that bag has or 275 pounds in the bottom of it. Um, they might be, but... They, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that they make, they make in the States. I won't say that about these. I don't know if they make these in the States or not. But they get them in stock pretty quickly. And this, um, this is adjustable. So you can go higher, you can go lower. 
sometimes my legs are really tight and so I keep the bag low because I don't want to kick as high and then I work my way up as I warm up then I start to lift it up and then I can practice from here I won't I won't I was gonna throw it throw a wheel kick but I'll pull my muscle um, I haven't stretched but you throw the wheel kicks you can throw anything on these so if you do like Taekwondo especially these are amazing bags for Taekwondo Tang Soo Do some of the karate styles, especially American karate, which is really like an amalgamation of a lot of different styles. If you do the Muay Thai, that doesn't allow you to blast them in the leg. You want one of these, which is gonna let you kick low. I like these if you do um, the Kali sticks. Let me grab those. Because with the Kali sticks, now you, you can practice up here, but you can also practice low, right? You can practice some other strikes up. Down. So you can start practicing like that with weapons, but if you don't have that, maybe you have a tree. Um, at the last school, it was 12,000 square feet, built big building, right? Two floors, we had five classrooms. We had poles in some of the rooms, keep the ceiling up. Just wrap those with extra mats. We cut up and wrap them with duct tape. My favorite duct tape, by the way, is um, Gorilla Glue brand. Stuff is indestructible almost. But you use that, and you can practice all your stick strikes. You can practice the knife strikes a little bit. But like you said, it depends on what you're doing, what your training is like. Ideally, you, you have all this stuff, right? But I don't need any of it, and you don't need any of it. Let me show you how to get stronger punches without a bag. Hold on. Think about what the bag is. The bag is resistance, right? So when you're punching, this one is gonna have better, uh, more things you can do with kicking and punching. Those bags are gonna give you more resistance. That guy over there, the big heavy bag, that's gonna be the absolute best because it's more consolidated. Um, if you go to Thailand, that bag is gonna be touching the floor, the Muay Thai bag. We like to put them up a little bit so that they swing. But in Thailand, it's gonna be on the ground Kind of like you're kicking someone's leg because it's great leg is on the ground. So you can adjust that, give it more resistance. All of these have on the bottom, these rings. Oh, you see that? There it is. That's a D-ring, right? This ring right there so that you can anchor it to the floor with a stretchy band. And if you don't have an anchor to the floor, you just put like a, a big plate or a... Uh, I like to use kettlebells to anchor. I take that down and I put up this bag, the headache bag. This one's really big and fat, right? Uh, I like the ones that are a little bit smaller, like the speed bags, they make you really learn how to hit that thing, right? And if you hold it like this and you punch it, <laughs> that's the easiest way to do it. Because the headache bag, you're gonna hit it like this <laughs> and it's gonna go like this and you're gonna to have to slow it down. You're gonna to have to improve your technique and then it's gonna start doing this again. But that's the purpose of the headache or the reflex bag, double in bag. Um, they have different styles. The Mexican style has one here, one here, and they're all thin. But it, you know, it's designed to get you to um, hit a moving target. Because if you're fighting, you have to move a hitting target. The best thing about the big, big heavy bag for boxing and for power, for self, street fight self-defense, and think about a Mike Tyson, or a, a, if you've ever fought, uh, even for fun. Yeah, uh, rags, the, you know, rag, yeah. The rags are best because the rags are gonna move better. The sand was, is all gonna fall down. Um, if, if the sand all collects in the bottom, then what you get is the bottom is really hard and up here is really soft. Um, yeah, I don't know if you see, but all of mine are on springs at the top. And especially if you put it in your house or in, in the building and you have the, it's attached to the rafters and every time you hit it, it shakes the whole house. And whoever lives with you starts smashing the floor or yells, you know, what are you doing down there? It's because of all that extra force going on the rafters, which is attaching everything else in the house. So it starts shaking things off tables and out of the cabinets and you're down there getting a good workout and you come upstairs and half of the cups are our glasses are broken in the kitchen. And then whoever you're living with is not very happy. But you get the spring, and the spring absorbs a lot of it. 
in good technique. When you get better technique, it won't be as much. But the bag down there, what happens is when you hit it, it's going to move. When it comes back, it weighs more. It goes away and it weighs more on the way back, and then you hit it again, you hit it again, and you hit it again, and you start to develop. The bones start to change. The marrow starts to change. Everything gets more dense because you have these tiny little fractures. But you're, you're getting that uh, explosive knockout power. And then, boom, boom, when you hit things, you hit things harder than anybody else. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to depend. Um, but here's what's fun about it. Start lighter, and then as you develop more, put more weight in it and get a feel for it. Get a feel for what works for you. But what I, like what I was trying to say before, none of it, you don't need any of it. You don't need any of this gear. Um, it, it, but if you, if you can get it, that's great. Do it, right? Floor bag is great if you have limited space. But the other thing the floor bag does is it goes, hear that? So if there's someone below you, it's almost like you're stomping on the floor, stomping on the floor. So they all have their drawbacks, their limitations. If you have one of these, you now have almost one of the best punching devices ever. You can, and I'm gonna use this, that doesn't mean you need a bag, but I'm gonna anchor it here. And now I just wrap it around my hand, I get my good fighting stance, I can practice my footwork, right? Let me see, move it. So I bring it up, now I can go in and back, right? And I can start moving side to side. So now I have resistance while I'm doing my footwork. My heart rate's gonna get up, I'm gonna get stronger. Uh, it depends on your style, depends on your instructor. If it's like a traditional karate taekwondo style and you go a couple times a week and then you train on your, your own every single day and you're focused, you ask good questions, you leave your mind open. Maybe three years, jujitsu, black belt, anywhere seven, nine years, it's gonna be longer. Uh, again, depending on the style, some American karate schools six months, but that's because they're giving them to three-year-olds. So my biggest complaints right now is that I see some martial arts and the quality is, and it's not that I'm like, oh, I'm better than you. It's like, you're not going to be able to defend yourself for real with that low level of skill. And the person who taught you that knows better or should know, not all of them do, but they, most of them should know better. And it's because they're playing karate. This is what I call, ha -ja -ja, you know, whatever. I call it playing karate. And it's, so they get super intense. So, so, yes, sir, pop it, And they recite the creed and the code and all that stuff. But they're not throwing the punches. I've watched many classes in the last five or six years because I travel around. Taekwondo, karate, you name it. Even, there are even some lousy jiu-jitsu schools out there. But there are a lot of really good ones. A lot of the good Brazilian schools, awesome. But there are a lot of lousy schools out there where the instructor really doesn't know. And, and even, especially in this area, there are a lot of people who bought it as a job. They bought a martial arts school. And it's not necessarily, um, yeah, it's very forgiving. All that squishiness, right? But um, I appreciate that. I, I, I've messed around with Instagram a little bit. I, I'm not doing it right now just because I do all this. But um, what I see is like one class, 45 minutes, lots of creed reciting. They threw 10 punches, 10 kicks. I'm not exaggerating. That's not a you know, gross exaggeration. That's the truth. And it's because of... You know, they're, they're, they're teaching the wrong things, the wrong age groups, and they're, they, they either they don't know themselves or they've given up or whatever, or they're afraid they can't make rent, so they're allowing the parents to dictate. And um, um, depends on the style. If you look at what they're doing in the Olympics now, in Taekwondo, it's a lot of front leg kicking. And when I used to go to Korea all the time, those guys over there, boom, 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 four years, fourth done. And that's not an exaggeration. The little kids... They've been playing in the Taekwondo schools in Korea way before we started playing over here. Like uh, soccer, um, dodgeball, where it was like kitty camp. And people think, you know, they just assume, oh, Korea, highest level, because it's Taekwondo, martial arts, Korean martial arts. They must be what? No, it's, it was 10 times worse in Korea 10, 15, 20 years ago than it is. It's about the same now, right? And, and, but, but, but that's not all schools. There's still a lot of schools where they're really high quality and that's here, there, that's everywhere. But it, it, it's, it's all over the place. It's such a fragmented industry. 
All right, so we're here. You have the band in your hand. You get in that fighting position. We talked about your footwork, going in and back, side to side. If it's Taekwondo, you want to be switching, right? And then you can slide in and out. You can throw your punch, slide back, throw your punch, switch, punch, switch. So you can start to do the footwork with the punching, or you can just isolate, slow at first, get a good range of motion, make sure it's below your elbow, so it doesn't smack your face, and then explosive, boom, boom. You're gonna to start to build that power in the arms, this, uh, the body that you would if you had a bag. This is if you don't have a bag, right? You don't have a bag, but you wanna get harder, harder punches. You get a band, and the difference in cost, I got this at uh, this co uh, company in the States called TJ Maxx. And they own um, Home Goods and they own Marshalls. And they always have these things. This is from that Bally's company that used to dominate fitness in the last recession. Uh, 65 pounds strong. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Um, but I know it gets me a good workout. $9. I got this for $9. $300, right? With shipping. Um, and if you want to get one of those, you don't want to pay full price, look on Let It Go or uh, Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist and wait. This, uh, <laughs> whatever this is, uh, Wuhan, uh, COVID, coronavirus, shutdown. And again, I don't want to get into politics. It's going to kill at least 25% of all martial arts schools in this country, in Canada, I don't care where you are, Australia, some areas, especially down here, because Florida supposedly has like the worst um, uh, coronavirus number two, which I, again, I, I think it's, it's a lot to do with uh, other things. Because if you look at the real numbers, whatever, whatever. But all that aside, the reality is we don't have any control of it, you or me. They're, they're killing our business. I might survive, I don't know. Most people won't. Probably 30, 40% of all martial arts, and I've already seen it. Um, the guy's just going in the middle of the night. They just left. I appreciate that. Um, I have some kids coming in here to work out tonight, trying to get their black belt because their school, the guy closed, left, gone. Uh, I think he may have said goodbye to everybody, but I, but I think the parents are saying, you know, we just went to his school one day and there was a sign on the window. Sorry, I'm out of here. And, um, you know, whether you don't do it like that. If you have to, don't do it like that. But that's the reality. And the point is this, uh, and just around the corner, uh, and, and I work with a business broker, so they call me when some of these guys are trying to get out and sell. And they call me and they say, hey, so-and-so around the corner, he's got this many square feet, he teaches boxing, kickboxing, he teaches some martial arts, and he has a gym. He wants to sell it to you for 150. Two weeks later, he'll sell it to you for 100. Three weeks later, we'll sell it to you for 50. Uh, three weeks later, he just wants, it, uh, wants out. He doesn't want the liability. Will you take it over for a dollar? No lie. This is ha keeps happening. And then I hear through the grapevine, I heard over the weekend from my brother-in-law that the guy that was trying to sell me his gym four months ago or right when this started, for um, he, was, he wanted 199 He sold everything, 25 grand, he's gone. So he just sold the equipment. The guy who took it over just needed more equipment. But what's going to happen is, all these schools, 30%, 40% of all martial arts schools, especially in the States and in the West, Western countries, gone. Um, except in places like in Germany where they're subsidized or whatever. I don't know how that's going to happen. But, you know, by the States, some of them are, some of them aren't. But if you need to buy any gear, this is my point, if you need to buy any of this stuff, wait. Wait two to three months. Wait till after the election. We see what's going to happen, whether they're going to close us or open us or whatever. And then... They're just and just pay attention to the classified ads on Craigslist because you're going to see all of the auctions, absolute auctions, and you're going to see it on Facebook Marketplace where schools are trying to pay the rent and they're selling all their bags, or they're selling all their mats and they're selling all their kicking pads, and that's what's going to happen. And I've, it's already happening; it's happening now. But if you wait, there's going to be more and more stuff on the market. Don't waste your money. If you want a gear or you need gear or you're thinking about opening a martial arts school, then wait. Give yourself a couple months and pay attention to what's happening. It's sad, it's true, but those guys, they just want out. They don't want to do it anymore. They've lost their heart for it. Here's an opportunity for you to either get great gear or if you want to open a school, open a school. All right, last one, and then I have to go. I want to get my hair cut. It's getting real bushy. You put it like this, you whip it over your back, right? 
And this is for resistance and to make you a faster puncher so you can knock people out, right? You start your bouncing and then you start throwing your punch and then you throw your back punch and then you can throw one, two, one, two, one, two. You can run in place, punching. You can practice bob and weave and boom, boom and moving and you're punching. And the whole time, this is if you don't have a bag, um, yeah, you won't, they won't reopen. The, uh, and, and they're not gonna make it off of Zoom calls. There's no way you can run a martial arts school on Zoom calls. Uh, a couple will, but most can't. There's just not enough money in it. Um, and most parents don't wanna do that. And you need to get out there. <laughs> uh, I went in this morning and dropped the kids off to the gymnastics camp. And I didn't have my face mask. I refused to wear one forever. Well, I'll show you. I'll be teaching at the school, so I have to. So this is the one when I go to the little kitty school. I'll be teaching from this, right? It's ridiculous, right? It's not just, it's not ridiculous because the way it looks. It's just ridiculous because it doesn't do anything. Only if you look at the real numbers. And then, but I have to wear it because of the appearance. This is the one. I wear this silly thing when I go into Publix to buy myself a sandwich. Now, when I go into the gas station right next door, none of those guys are wearing them, so I don't wear one in there. That's probably where all this is coming from, right? That one gas station is getting everybody sick. That was a joke. I don't think that's true. Um, but, but these things, these things, they don't breathe. And I work with a guy who only reads lips, so I can't wear it, wear it at all. Yes, it'll be on YouTube. Um, yeah, I don't know. Again, let's the state of politics. You and I can't control it. That's the point. We can speak up and say what we know is, is, is true or whatever. But for the rest of the time, train to keep your body strong, believe in yourself, and then take care of the people around you. Take care of your family, your friends, stand up for what's right. You see something wrong, say, hey, that's not cool. Don't talk to her like that. Get out of his face. You don't have to like him, but you can't make fun of him. That kind of stuff. Be good, be honest, do the things that you have control over. The rest of this stuff was way out of our hands, way up there. They're fighting these battles for power and control that none of us have anything to do with. We're just the little pawns. So don't, let, don't become a pawn in their fight. Take care of yourself. Learn how to defend yourself. Throw a good, couple of good punches, move to the right, move to the left. If you need to build some power and you can't afford a bag or you don't have anywhere to put it, get one of these. Yeah, paint big ball masks are great. Get one of these and, oh, let me show you. These are great too because you can now practice your hook punches and you're going to get faster hook punches. You throw it under your bum and you lean back and you go real fast. Get that heart rate up, build that power for that hard uppercut knockout punch, all with a $9 rubber band that you can get most stores. It's hard to find because they keep getting sold out, but keep looking. You'll find them. Go look at the big box stores, and usually they're in the clearance section of great places. Yeah, and amazing. My point is, don't waste a lot of money until it's your passion and you're really into it. Then invest. But it's like if you're going to join a gym before COVID, <laughs> I would say to you, do two weeks, 25 push-ups, 25 sit-ups, 50 squats, air squats, every morning, every morning, go for a brisk walk, no less than 10 minutes. If you can do that for two weeks, then spend the money on the gym. If you can't be in the routine of fitness, don't waste your money in the gym. You're not going to go. You're going to be like 90% of the people who, who buy it and then they can't do it. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Keep training.